This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 991, Four Mistakes Extroverted Parents Make With Their Introverted Kids, by Jana Ruhart of introvertdeer.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Thursday episode of Optimal Relationships Daily. I am your host and narrator, Greg Audino, here to kick off the parenting leg of the week with you, that being Thursdays and Fridays. We're going to turn to introvertdeer.com for our parenting piece today. And this article we're featuring explores ways that extroverted parents can successfully parent introverted children. So let's jump on in and start optimizing your life. Four Mistakes Extroverted Parents Make With Their Introverted Kids by Jenna Ruhart of introvertdeer.com You might know about that trick with Mentos and Diet Coke. When you drop the candy in the bottle, you get a splash. Something similar might happen when an extrovert tries to communicate with an introvert. In a situation where the extrovert is the parent and the introvert is the kid, A. Communication happens rather often, so the misunderstanding rate is high. B. One is still a kid and often doesn't know how to deal with communication issues in practice. C. The extroverted parent may not inherently understand the fact that introverts perceive the world differently. So. When it comes to communication, what are some common mistakes extroverted parents make? Here are four mistakes either I or my close friends have made. Number one, extroverted parents ask, how was your day at school? And expect at least a five-minute story, but instead receive a quick, okay. Extroverts, this question may be too abstract for many introverts. Maybe your kid has created a beautiful story in their mind, but they know you want to hear about what happened in the real world. Introverts often don't know what's worth mentioning in conversation, so you may have to be more concrete and creative. Try using other questions to ask the same thing. For example, did you see your favorite teacher today? How is he? Or, you have so much math homework, is that okay for you? However, if you know your kid spent time with friends and definitely has something interesting to talk about but doesn't want to, don't force them. Introverted kids may need more privacy and time to process than you do. Number two, they want to be present in every part of their kid's life. Extroverts' lives are usually more homogenous. For example, when it comes to social media, they often befriend friends, teachers, parents, relatives, acquaintances, and even acquaintances' acquaintances without thinking twice. Introverts, however, usually live in a more segmented world home, school, the hour from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., friends on the internet, and so on. So it's possible that your kid will get confused and uncomfortable when you show up at school among their peers, for example. You can argue that your presence in all parts of their life is necessary, since there are a lot of dangerous things your kid can be exposed to. No kid is immune to being bullied by classmates, receiving inappropriate messages from internet perverts, and so on. There are even apps you can use to monitor an iPhone and read your kids' text messages on iCloud from any device, like a Parent 007. Well, it's true that introverted kids are less likely to tell you about their problems than extroverted ones. On the other hand, introverts tend to be less influenced by other people, and they are less likely to fall in with bad company just to feel like they are part of a community. Of course, as a parent, you should be involved in your kid's life. However, Introverted kids would appreciate if you get closer in the most unobtrusive way possible. Ask their opinion on certain issues, including those you face at work, for example, or read a book and discuss it together. Make a start, and the rest will follow. Number three, they force introverted kids to socialize more. Extroverted parents do this because they think it's so boring to be alone, or to achieve success in life, you have to be sociable. However, Since brains also contribute to your child's success, your child will not necessarily fail if they don't have a raging social life. Introverts often have many natural talents that they can use to build a career. For instance, introverts tend to dig deeper and consider all the details. Also, they are usually capable of lateral thinking, which is highly prized not only in creative industries, but also in the sciences, programming, and other fields. Even marketing, a field that for decades has been extrovert-oriented at its core, has been seeing a need for more introverts. Number four, 
They try to help by initiating communication between their kid and other people. Yes, it's true, sometimes introverts want to become friends with someone, but cannot make the first step because of a lack of practice or shyness. However, that doesn't mean your kid wants someone to do it for them. You run the risk of ruining the moment, and you may ultimately discourage your child from meeting new people if you keep stepping in. It would be better if you inspire your kid indirectly by telling real-life stories so they can understand how making friends works and what algorithms can be used to get acquainted with someone. Also, keep in mind that due to their uniqueness and mystique, introverts often attract people who are willing to make the first move. Ultimately, as an extroverted parent, if you can learn to accept your introverted child for who they are, life will be easier. A parent shouldn't demand a border pass into an introvert's private space as a payment for everything they have done for the kid. Introverts have a right to be their true selves to get energy from their own sources, to value things that matter only to them, and to make friends with people they really like. If you learn to appreciate your differences, extroverted parents and introverted kids can complement each other and learn a lot from each other's perspectives. You just listened to the post titled, Four Mistakes Extroverted Parents Make With Their Introverted Kids by Jana Ruhart of introvertdeer.com. And thanks a lot to Jana for that read. Definitely important material for all parents to check out. Regardless of who's introverted and who's extroverted, a parent's eagerness to mold their child in a particular way can often be very alienating, should there not be equal time dedicated to learning about the child's interests, you know, how they see things and how they choose to communicate. While, of course, it's great for parents to watch over and guide their children in what they feel is a good direction, the relationship should still have elements of a partnership. Yes, we sacrifice a lot as parents, a lot, but those sacrifices should never be transactional, the repayment being a child only listening to us and not the other way around. This type of mutual respect combined with guidance and caretaking is what makes for good parent-child relationships in the younger years as well as the older years. So, on that note, it's time to wrap things up. I appreciate you guys stepping in as always, and I hope you learned a little something today. If you did, we have another parenting episode coming up tomorrow, so be sure to stop in for that one too. I hope to see you all there, where your optimal life awaits.